Hello everyone, it's March 22nd, 2016. It's Tuesday. It's Harp Tuesday! And for this episode of Harp Tuesday, I'm going to start a two-episode look at uh, Marianne Mosetich's Songs of Nymphs. Which is a beautiful piece of music. I just uploaded a, a, a video of me playing it from February. And this is a piece that I learned many, many years ago. Um, I actually recorded it in 2011. Uh, sorry, in 2001, <laughs> uh, 15 years ago. And beautiful piece of music. Mozadish is a, a Canadian composer. And this piece was written in 1988 uh, for Erica Goodman, the, the wonderful, amazing harpist Erica Goodman. And you can tell that he must have worked quite extensively with her because it fits so nicely under the hand and, and it's just a, a beautiful piece of music and a lot of fun to play. So it's made up of four different songs or movements and I'm gonna today I'm gonna talk about the first two and then uh, in two weeks time I'll talk about the last two. So it starts with a prelude and, and that's kind of a it's a nice prelude it sort of sets the tone it, uh, the style of writing and the, and the type of music and um, it's this is a great one to think about uh, you know being very even right right from the beginning when we get this little Making sure, right, here's the tune. Or, or, or the, you know, those notes are the ones we're, we're trying to hear, right? They're, they're the um, longer notes, but we also want to hear. You know, just making sure everything is super even. And in particular, paying attention is always to the notes in the weak positions, right? So the notes that aren't on the downbeats um, can sometimes maybe just need a little extra attention. Um, and of course the transition from the finger to the thumb. And imagine, imagine this note, right, which is a long way to go. Imagine that you're that you're you know you're I don't know you're playing the French horn or something that you're sustaining that throughout even though we can't right we can imagine it lasting um, anyway so we go on we go on we get this uh, so we get those two these two bars right and then we get these constant sixteenth notes and when you start that that's again sometimes it's nice to maybe start something like this just a hair slower than you're going to get eventually just so that. It's really clear to people's ears when they're listening what is going on. Oh, uh, whatever it is, sorry. Etc. Etc. And again, trying to both bring out the longer notes, the the tune is the tune, as it were, and also keeping very even and being able to do some you know some rise and fall and stuff like that so uh, what I want to talk about then is when we get to let's see bar 10 11 12 um, bar 12 we're down here and it's written they've got this is all in the right hand and for me of course with for me at least I don't want to move my thumb back down right I want to go rather than that's just gonna whoa, it's gonna wear you out right um, so back in 2001 when I recorded it that's what I did but recently in the past five years or whatever I've decided eh, maybe I'm gonna make life a little bit easier for myself and actually take those notes on the downbeat the tune with the left hand first one we can't because the left hand's got this chord notes and the left hand is taking them so we're just going ahead and taking those higher notes with the left hand it works out again the downbeat we can't because the left hand has got the chord but it does I think make that sec those sections and later on we'll talk about that on, on the next page make them just a little bit easier so something to be aware of um, then what did I want to talk about oh and we get this little uh, all those harmonics 
great spot to be aware of, are you playing a natural or a flat and, and having to make that micro adjustment in terms of a flat, it's gonna be a little bit higher on the string. Natural, it's gonna be a little bit lower compared to the flat. As we go around here, we've got the, you know, we've got the C and the F naturals that occur. So, you know, making sure that they just drop down a little bit and then we move back up when we go to the flats. So when we get to uh, bar 39, um, here, I think it's not worth trying to come up and get this one with the left hand, but, and then this one again, we have to take it with the right hand, but then, quite possible to just again take those and that was always um uh, that always was a, a a particularly strenuous part and it definitely to me at least makes life easier to take those downbeats with the left hand then we get this uh this nice little Five four bar. Uh, sorry. So here, being aware that at least for me, I'm not comfortable doing four two on the bottom, so I do have to bring the thumb back and forth. But fortunately, it's not too bad. We just have this start. Being aware that the thumb's moving down. And the danger of placing that thumb on this G when we just played the A. Easy for the back of the thumb to nick the A. This place. Again, we're taking that, this note with left hand as well, uh, I think, right? Yes. Again, you can see how dangerous it is for that thumb going to that G. So just, just that's a spot to work on clean, you know, making sure it's really clean, being aware of that thumb, uh, both where it's placing on the G and the fact that it has to move up to the C and back. Uh, just some big movement. And again, I do, I always have taken the, the accented B, the last note in the bar on 46 and 47, in the left hand. Um, and... Uh, so what else have we got? Oh, uh, the Piomoso um, bar 60. Well, whatever key we're in. This is a great one to practice slowly thinking. So the, the, the problem with this, right, is we've got We keep playing that G between both hands. And so we want to be really aware of waiting to the last minute to replace so that we don't hear. You know, we don't hear a bunch of buzzing or getting it stopped, but. And same as on this descending thing, right? Just being really, for me, I, I kind of feel like, I, you know, it, getting the hands in position and then just dropping down to the last minute, right? So that we want to, we want to hear each string ring for as long as possible. So really thinking about delaying the placement. Um, and uh, finally the ending, this is a great spot to just practice slowly and loudly and evenly and, and maybe accenting a little bit those notes on the weak position, right? Or, or just, so. sequence of 32nd notes. And then here, 
I've always kind of slid up, so muffled these bottom ones instead of muffling them after that chord. And then, yes, just in a quick muffle. So it looks like, uh, what have we got here? Uh, maybe a spot for a slow motion uh, Monday video. Just, we definitely need to muffle that E, right? Because we're gonna change it and otherwise it's gonna make a <laughs> quite a noise. Um, great, so uh, again, a, a really nice one to work on listening for evenness and, and, and strength. Um, let's talk about reflection. So this is such a beautiful, beautiful song, beautiful movement. Um, you know, just setting that mood from the beginning and then trying to Trying to make those long notes ring out, you know, so he says bell-like, right? So we don't want to we don't want to accent them too much. Uh, and it needs to stay peaceful, but they have to, you know, we have to be hearing them through that that entire bar. So just playing around with that. Um, and uh, oh, I want to mention one of my favorite spots here is getting from 21 to 23 to the super moso, the five four bar. So let's see, it's just. It's this neat moment where we've been doing this little, we're winding our way down. And we get this very suspended feeling here. Those notes, we finally get a note on beat th uh, three and so it's just, oh, it's just this, this tiny little perfect moment, right? And it's really important to, 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 to not have any other surface noise or anything going on there. And you don't want to make a big deal of it or anything, but just, I, I love that moment. And trying to wait <laughs> as long as you can to place that left hand at the same time as trying to make it, you know, make sure it's not unsafe, you know, get, get, get there in time. Um, but we get that suspended. And suddenly we have this uh, motion. Um, you know, that suddenly we've got constant 16th notes. Uh, anyway, that, that's a great spot to practice, right? Because again, it's, it's trying to play it as cleanly as possible, having to delay the placement sometimes and, and, and not buzz and and again, just be soft and flowing. So a great spot to practice. Um, now this this edition that I have is, is fairly old. Uh, now I think you can, from the Canadian Music Center, uh, there should be a link right here. Um, you can actually just buy a PDF if you want. And I, I would imagine that this is has been corrected, but I just wanted to let you know that, um, where is it? Uh, 32, there's an 8 VA, 8 VA at the end of the bar that you can ignore it's, uh, it's not meant to be there um and bar 30 33 35 that's a g on top so it's we have this pattern f g a c and that pattern that is written works very nicely in terms of splitting up the hands as we go down anyway just be aware that it's it's f G A C C um, on that spot, and um, what else to talk about in this one? Uh, again, this middle section, right when it gets more excited. Making sure that even with accents that we're hearing everything, that everything's nice and even and crisp. Um, at the end, 51, 52, again, I do like taking all four of these notes here in the right hand. And here I keep taking four notes, so I take that D, the second to last note in the bar. This is bar 52. And then the G with three in the left hand. So again, we can do as written. Four, three, two, one, four, three, two, and then slide 
because then we get one, two, three, uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Um, so again, this is, this is very well put on the page, right? Again, I think uh, many thanks are due to Erica Goodman. And, uh, but just that's one spot where I do like doing, uh, definitely muffle the E and the F down here because we're about to change them. Uh, and then we're back to the Temple Primo. And uh, just one final thought on the on the ending. So it's, it's kind of interesting, right? Because we're used to, in this type of piece, this type of movement, we would imagine the ending might kind of fade away, right? Um, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty calm piece, gets excited in the middle. As I said, I, I like to, when I, if I introduce it, you know, it's this reflection and if it's a reflection in, uh, of a, you know, maybe a, a pool in the middle of the forest, because this is, this is a very, uh, uh, piece about nature, right? Well, by the middle of this piece, someone's tossed a large object into the pool and the reflection's gotten a little excited and then we calm down, right? So we calm down at the end. But what's interesting, right, is that he's got us going from pianissimo all the way up to a mezzo forte on this final arpeggio up. So let's see, we wound our way down. A D flat. Um, and so kind of neat, right? To actually rather than rather than maybe thinking rather than fading away um it, it really works to to bring to bring that up and it's not that we're getting more excited right it's just that it's getting louder so to me i probably stretch the end just a tiny bit um and I, I don't know, I'd have to listen. Uh, I probably kind of think of fermata in that bar where we have essentially nothing, right? Where we've just got that tied note that you're trying to place that ending harmonic in the perfect spot. And whether that's exactly uh, after three beats or, 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 or not, um, again, I think something to play around with, um, trying to find that perfect placement of it, right? And you know, maybe you don't get it every time. Um, so for me, uh, because I am kind of stretching the end of that arpeggio a little bit, I play that, you know, we've gone four, two, and then I play that A with two as well, just because I feel I have better control. I'm able to, again, it's really important, right? Because we're getting each note, we're trying to get a little bit louder. And so just these single notes, right? So each one is so important. And, and that's the last one on this run up. And I want to get it so precise. And so I think for me, two is going to be a little bit safer than the thumb. And it will maintain a more consistent sound. I don't know, up to you, something to play around with. For the final note, and it's nice because we've got this F harmonic and doubled here. So even if, even if maybe we miss the harmonic a little bit, we still hear this F up here. For me, I'm more comfortable. I feel like I'm gonna get a more consistent and better sounding harmonic with my right hand on this F than with my left hand. So I just switch hands there. Anyway, this is a wonderful piece. As I say, I believe you can um, actually buy and download the PDF from the Canadian Music Center. So if you're looking for some new repertoire, um, this is a, a great piece to check out. And um, I'll be back in a couple weeks to look at the last two movements. Thanks for watching. Cheers. <laughs>